and let's discuss it and, and go from there. Um, actually, can I have the sheet of paper you gave me for a second? Uh, or just even the whole notebook? Or you'll probably need the, yeah. Yeah, that, that'll work, if, if you don't mind. Here we go. Thank you. Hopefully that's readable. Can we hit some of the lights? Does that help? Yeah, that's good. All right, cool. All right, here's the tables that the class came up with. We have a table for the conference room. In it, there is a room number, which you're using as a primary key. There is a name. There is hours. What, what does hours represent? Hours that is available. Okay. That wasn't explicitly said in the requirement, but that's a nice touch to, to indicate the hours that it were, what was open. Um, of course, one thing to keep in mind is that... Um, you know, were you doing something like that, you would want to do, you might do actually a start and end hours for every day of the week. Yeah. Well, again, keep in mind that, that you are doing, right now you're just storing the data. All right. So. How you would actually use that data to like match up, for example, to see if it was scheduled um, you know, for a time when the conference room wasn't available. Um, that would be sort of the next people's job, the people that developed the application to go up against it and wrote the queries. Um, so, but, but that really wasn't a requirement, so we can, we can just forget that altogether. The one thing that you didn't put in, which I assume is probably just an oversight, you didn't put in the capacity of the room. You know, that is that the room seats 10 people or 12 people or whatever. Yeah, I was, I'm sure it was, all right, because that one's pretty straightforward. Everything else is okay with that. The equipment uh, ID. Uh, you have uh, an equipment ID or in the equipment table. You have an equipment ID, a type, and a description. Someone tell me about that table. What does that table represent? What will be a typical entry in that table? Okay. So in other words, the type would designate the kind of equipment it was. The description would be maybe more explanatory notes, maybe a, a serial number or a, um, you know, uh, this is a, a Dell laptop or this is a, um, a, a, a projector with such and such resolution or a, a six foot by 12 foot whiteboard or something like that. Okay. Um, that's fair. Any, okay, let's go, over, let's go over your solution completely and then we'll go back and, and we'll, we'll talk about it, all right? Your room equipment table then does what? This table here. Right, it implements the many-to-many -many relationship because we've identified that a, um, we've identified that a, um, uh, a room could have many pieces of equipment, all right? So, therefore, um, one room could have many pieces of equipment. Many pieces of, a, um, and, and I guess that is a, a good question here. Equipment table. Does that relate to a specific item or does that relate to a kind of item? 
a generic term. Okay. So backing up, the serial number probably isn't something that you'd put in the description, right? But like laptop, you know, a description might be, you know, I don't know, something that was true of all the laptops, right? Because the reason that I'm questioning that is that um, if, if that relates to a specific piece of equipment, in other words, if that equipment table really represented this computer, this computer here, then there wouldn't be a one, there wouldn't be a many-to-many -many relationship between conference room and equipment, right? Because this computer can only be in one conference room at a time. This computer can't be in multiple conference rooms. Now, the way you said the equipment is sort of a generic designation where this is laptop, all right, then yes, a laptop can be, you know, some laptop can be in many conference rooms. So that's one thing that's important when you're designing databases is make sure that everyone understands how you're using terms, all right? Uh, because terms can mean different things um, depending on how you're used. For example, your equipment means sort of a generic type of equipment. If you were talking to someone about this and you were solving it, you'd have to make that very clear to them because they're liable to interpret equipment as meaning a specific piece of some equipment. So, you know, it's not just uh, playing word games and all that. You really have to know because that will have a big impact on your database design. All right. Uh, even in the first uh, Garden Glory example, uh, there, there was talk of a services. Well, what services, what, what are services for a landscaping company? Are they the generic services that they could perform? In other words, a list of all the things that they might do? Or by service, did they mean that on a particular day, at a particular customer, they went and cut the grass? So it's important that you really precisely define what these things are. So um, if you're telling me that that equipment table is a generic, is a table that contains the kinds of equipment that are in conference rooms, then yes, there's a many-to-many -many relationship and that um, will allow that to be uh, implemented. All right. You then have a meeting table down here where you have a meeting ID, a meeting name, so a description, a start and stop time, then you have a description. That's, I'm not really sure if those two things are different, the name of the meeting and the description. It might be, might not be. I don't know. No big deal either way. You then have a foreign key to the room number. Now, foreign key to employee. You have an employee table that has a name and department. All right. This part is more or less correct. This part we're going to spend a little time on. So let me go and let me take and let me redraw this. And we'll redraw the portions of it. Or I'll, I'll duplicate your top portion of it. And then we'll talk about the other portions of it. So you had a conference room table. a uh, room equipment table a type of equipment all right and maybe we'll fill in some attributes later but for now that's fine you had attributes on yours and they, they, were, they were good. The other two tables you have is you have an employee table and a meeting table. Now, a meeting has a relationship with a room, right? That is, a meeting takes place in one room, but a given room can have many meetings. So there's a one-to-many relationship like that between room and meeting. What's the relationship between meeting and employee? One meeting can have how many employees? Many. many. A given employee can be at how many meetings? Many. many. 
So really, one of the issues you had is you had an employee ID in the meeting table and that would be only if a meeting only consisted of one employee, which some of the most productive meetings I've had have been meetings that only had one employee in them. But unfortunately, there are other meetings where there are more than one employee. So you would need a meeting employee table that would go like this. And again, this would have a primary key of meeting ID. There'd be a description associated with it. There'd be a start time, an end time, and a room number. That room number being a foreign key over to the conference room table. One thing to recognize when we say uh, in, in database terms, especially in access, when we talk about a time, a time is a date time. All right, it's a combination of date and time. So there is no separate date field and time field in access. So we don't need a starting day, or a, we don't need a, a date, a starting time, and an ending time. The starting uh, time and ending time will both contain a date as part of it. So we can even handle a, a meeting that, that started at 11 p.m. and went to 1 a.m., you know, um, because the starting and ending time would contain both a date component and a time component. All right. Um, this table then, or the employee table, would simply have an employee ID as primary key. Probably have something like employee name. We'll leave department for a second. This table would have the meeting ID and the employee ID as a primary key and then it would also be foreign keys to their respective tables. Conference room would have a room ID or room number, a description of the room, a capacity, this type of equipment would have a equipment ID and maybe the name of the equipment and a description. I think that's pretty much what you guys had, although I think you call them by different names. The equipment room table would have a room ID and an equipment ID. All right. Now, there's two other things that, that um, need changed in this. All right. Which, which again, for you guys' first uh, collaborative assignment like this is, is pretty good, really. The one thing is, is you folks had a department as an attribute in the employee table. Actually, it would be better to have a separate table for departments and create a relationship. Why do I say that? Right, because truly the department is an entity, right? It makes sense. And there's a relationship between department and, and employee, whereas a department could have many employees. Each employee only has one department. What's wrong, or what's the potential problem if we simply make the department an attribute in the employee table? What's the issue that would run into? Yeah, inconsistencies in the department name. So. Let's say, for example, you know, thinking about how this database could be used. Maybe the marketing department wants to have a meeting, all right? And they want to see how many, or they want to see what rooms there are that have enough seats for the entire marketing department, all right? And again, we haven't talked about queries yet in this class, but we could run a query to see how many people there are in the marketing department. And then we could look for conference rooms that have at least that as a capacity. Well, if it was simply a freeform text field, then people could type anything in for, for the department. Someone could type in market, someone could type marketing, someone could type in MRKTG or something like that, you know, an abbreviation. 
And therefore, you never get a good idea of how many people really were in the marketing department. There would be an inconsistency, and therefore, the, the output that you got, the information that you got out, wouldn't be usable. All right? By doing this, you ensure that there's consistency. Everyone in the marketing department is going to get the marketing ID, whatever that ID is. All right? And we're going to constrain it so that they can't put in someone erroneously with a incorrect ID, you know. So and so works for the computer science department. Well, this company doesn't have a computer science department. What do they do? <laughs> you know. So by putting that constraint in, we can make sure that they only put in employees that, that match that, and that that uh, that those that those categories or those uh, departments rather are handled in a consistent manner. So that's that's the one thing that you omitted. Take a second to look at the requirements again, and let's see if we can spot the other thing that you omitted. Anyone else? No. This over here. Each meeting might require one or more than one piece of equipment. In other words, when we enter a meeting in, we want to enter in what piece of equipment it requires so that we can then go and look for, for conference rooms that have that equipment. All right. Let's say we were scheduling a meeting and we knew that we needed uh, teleconferencing uh, equipment. We'd want to store that as part of the meeting, right? Because then if we scheduled it, let's say, for this room, which does have teleconferencing uh, uh, capabilities, and someone was going to bump our meeting from this room, we'd have to remember, yeah, th this, that meeting actually does need teleconferencing communica uh, uh, communication equipment, so to put that in another room that had that same capability. So we need to store the um, requirements for the room, um, so, yeah, the requirements for the equipment for the meeting along with the equipment that each room has. So there would similar be, similarly be a meeting equipment table. For example, a meeting might be scheduled in this room that doesn't really need telecommunications. Why? Because the person likes this room. It's by their office. They don't have to walk up 10 flights of stairs to get to it. All right? So they may schedule it for this room even though they don't really need the telecommunication equipment. All right? Now, if another meeting needs to be scheduled at the same time that does require it, it would be nice to know, hey, this, rule, this meeting should take precedence because they actually need the telecommunication equipment, whereas that other meeting scheduled that room but doesn't really need the telecommunication. So does that make sense? All right, and the requirements? Yeah. So that was, that was the other thing uh, that um, I would add to this. Now, let's go and, and twist this just a little bit. All right. Let's say that we really wanted to keep track of individual pieces of equipment. All right, let's change the rules a little bit. Because the way I, I said it initially, I was implying that it really didn't matter what laptop they had in it, we just needed a room with a laptop or a room with a projector. So the, the, the response that you guys gave was, was perfect for that. Let's change the rules though a little bit. Let's say we want to, to know what exact equipment was in each room, which if you think about it, is probably more realistic, right? You, you know, the, a company will want to keep really close tabs on their inventory. In addition, it might be that there's five laptops in a room or two projectors or whatever. This room has two projectors on it. It actually has three projectors in it, all right? So, 
I think we can safely say that this part of the ERD, this part of the ERD would remain the same regardless of the equipment. So let's look at the top part of the ERD. Would have a conference room. Would have a specific piece of equipment. Would have an equipment type table. One piece of equipment is only of one type, right? It's not a laptop and a projector, it's just a laptop. But one equipment type may have several pieces of equipment associated with it. Conference room could have many individual pieces of equipment, but each piece of equipment only lives in one conference room. Right? Really the, about the only difference to this is the way the keys of this table would look and, so, and some of the attributes. The relationships are probably going to be the same. So in this table there'd be a, probably an equipment ID as a primary key, maybe like an inventory tag serial number or something like that. There'd be a room ID that would be a foreign key to that. There'd be an uh, equipment type that would be a foreign key to that. And then there might be some other information about the details of that particular piece of equipment. You know, again, serial number, manufacturer, uh, whatever. Now, how would the meeting play into here? What does a meeting have the relationship with now? Does that change? Yeah, it still goes to equipment type, right? Because it's not like we have a meeting and we need such and such specific laptop. We need a laptop or we need a projector or we need whatever the equipment type is. We don't need a specific piece of equipment of that type. So it's not like I need this computer. I need a computer. All right. So really, even if we made this, and I, I heard you guys talking a little bit about um, the, um, the difference. Uh, is, does that represent an equipment type or does that represent... Really, in terms of database structure, there's really not a huge difference in how it would look if you treated it as that... The difference comes in not really in the relationships, but how you have these attributes. In here, you're simply acknowledging that this room has this kind of equipment in it. Here, you're actually specifying the piece of equipment and details about it. And, oh yeah, that happens to be in this room. So really, the primary key changes, but, that, but that's about it. Uh, it still has a foreign key to each of the other two tables. There's still a many-to-many, -many, or there, there's still a one-to-many relationship going in both directions. Um, and so essentially, it's the same. Any questions about this? No, because if, if an equipment, uh, the question is, is would conference room to equipment still be a many to many? And the answer is no, because if we redefine equipment to mean a specific piece of equipment, then a specific piece of equipment can only be in one room. So if equipment, if one of the rows in equipment is this computer here, this computer can only be in this room. It can't be in this room and in the room across the hall. So one piece of equipment can only be in one room. All right. Um, if this moved, now it's possible you, you, you asked too during the discussion phase, could you move it? Yeah, you could move it, but then it would change. Just like we could move an employee from marketing to sales, right? They could be in a different department, but they're not in both. So, therefore, in that case, you know, with the, with the, uh, with the employee, you'd simply change their department ID to point to the new department. Here, you'd simply change the room ID to point to the new room. All right. Effectively, this equipment table would do a real similar thing of implementing the one or, or the many-to-many -many relationship between conference room and equipment type. 
So in that regard, yeah, that's still a many-to-many -many between conference room and equipment type, but between an individual piece of equipment, it isn't, if that makes sense. Other questions or comments? All right, good job. <laughs>